Hey, listeners, want to share your opinions, give feedback, or tell me and Coach Sarah what you're thinking? Send us a voice message. Voice messages are an easy way for you to send us audio that might end up in a future episode of The Mantrapod. They're the latest feature from Anchor, the platform we use to make this podcast. You can share a zinger that you hear or a cool phrase that we could use in the Mantra Open, or tell us how a mantra helped you move through a tough moment. We'll see all of your messages, and we might add them into a future episode, because Anchor makes that part easy for us as well. You can send us a voice message right now from wherever you're listening. Just tap the link in my show notes. I can't wait to hear from you. You don't need to be sorry for who you are. Does a dragon apologize for breathing fire? Or do the villagers shake their heads at dummies who look in the dragon's mouth? Hi, this is Coach MK, and this is The Morning Mantra. Hi, my name is MK Fleming. I'm a run coach based in Denver, Colorado. But this isn't a podcast about running exactly. Don't tell my clients, but we're never really talking about the running. When you know a craptastic event is coming, it helps to have a mantra to keep you centered and focused as you move through it. You don't have to be an athlete to be hashtag coached and loved by Coach MK. And if you are here then you are hashtag winning at life. Today's mantra is tweet, tweet, motherfucker. Tweet, tweet, motherfucker. Sarah Seberg. Sarah Seberg. That name in my inbox could only mean one thing. I made a mistake. You see, Sarah catches every mistake. All of them. She reads everything we produce immediately and responds with corrections even faster. It's to the point I openly refer to work as Seaberg ready. That draft might be finished, it might be finalized, but if it isn't Seaberg ready, then it isn't ready. I have a feeling that Sarah is this person everywhere she goes. I wonder if Sarah knows this. I have no doubt some people find this tendency of hers annoying that they find her annoying. Women, we are so annoying. This is a fascinating time to be alive. For 39 of my nearly 41 years, I've endured the duplicity of American culture, living in that gap where the things we say can and will be used against us and the things we don't say don't actually help or protect us. Back then, we didn't have the language to articulate those low-burning frustrations, and even if we did, we couldn't discuss them with anyone. Back then, not always knowing how to navigate that divide, those things made us so annoying. So annoying. What could be more annoying than having to point out hypocrisy without talking about the hypocrisy? Like that time I met the CEO of my Swiss firm in a big big, large meeting, and was invited to stand up and give honest feedback on the graduate program I'd been hired into. This meeting was coming at the end of two weeks of orientation to my new company, enduring courses about how the Swiss are super-duper direct, and Americans just aren't, even though we think we are. And if we want to succeed at this company, then we have to be less American and speak up. So, I spoke up. I explicitly stated how much I loved my job and how I really wanted to make a career there, and then pointed out two gaping, gaping disconnects in the program's structure that made me fear that a future wouldn't be possible in this program. I've never really told this story before. You see, this story would never be about the company or how the Swiss aren't as direct as they claim to be. You see, in this story, no matter how I tell it, I'm the punchline. The obvious American, the oblivious woman, the silly woman who doesn't know better. This story proves my lack of social skills or street smarts, that I am wild and uncouth and out of control and just don't get it. Even if no one can explain what it is, I'm the only one who didn't get it, the only one who missed the point. You don't even know how the story ends, yet you were likely cringing from the moment I said, so I spoke up. Oh my God, that's, uh, that's just so you. That is so like you, MK. (laughs) God, I bet he was really annoyed. Yeah, 
I'm really annoying. For years, I thought this was a class thing, that I was a dummy. I was ashamed. I mean, I heard this everywhere I went. Why wouldn't I be ashamed? I read all kinds of self-help books and management books and leadership books about getting to yes and the power of positive thinking and tried to change who I was, tried to develop better instincts. It didn't work. I, I still don't know how to navigate that gap. You know what, though? I shouldn't have to change. I'm fire. I'm smart and educated. I'm opinionated because I know my shit. I'm quite confident that I know my shit because as a woman, I know I need to know my shit better than everyone else in the room, better than anyone else you encounter today before I speak up. I'm also loyal as fuck and very, very direct. You'll never have to wonder where you stand. There are no lines to read between and there is zero passive in my aggression. I am rarely cruel. When I speak up, I'm not trying to tear or take anyone down. I'm trying to fix a problem or get shit done. I'm trying to make things better. I'm the canary in the coal mine. I don't know how much you know about coal mines, you guys, but I'm sure you've heard that saying before. It's a common saying for a reason. You don't enter a coal mine without a canary. You shouldn't need to read Adam Grant's new book, Originals, to know that the person invested enough to point out a problem instead of sneaking out the door is the person you want to listen to. Unless she's a woman. Oh, God, we are so annoying. Does this sound like you? Is there something about yourself that you'd like to change? Some aspect of yourself that gets in your way? Some aspect of your personality that, that other people find so annoying? There is? Yeah? You know what? Fuck them. Fuck them. This is where the mantra comes in. Tweet, tweet, motherfucker. That thing you do that annoys other people for reasons you don't understand, for reasons they cannot or will not explain, that shit's fire. Keep doing that. Sarah Seberg has been catching and calling out my mistakes, large and small, publicly and privately, for three years. When I go live, she's there. When I send an email, she opens it. She pays attention to every word I say, reads everything I write. Guys, no one does that. No one! She isn't just the canary in my coal mine. She volunteered for that job. She's a, she is a fan. She is a client. She is the person invested enough in what I do to point out a problem rather than demand a refund or a discount or unsubscribe from my mailing list. And that is why she is the person I listen to first and the person I listen to the most. When I see Sarah Seberg's name in my inbox, I drop the baby to respond. I am never annoyed. A few weeks ago, I sent around a very rough draft of a marginally important document to three people. Sarah Seberg, Coach Sarah, and Susan. Coach Sarah's comments on the document are three printed pages long. They are by far the most thorough notes I have ever received from Coach Sarah, who, by the way, was a graduate student recently, and she is thorough. Susan responded in minutes. Susan never responds in minutes. I wonder if Coach Sarah would have been as thorough or Susan would have been as expedient if they hadn't seen Sarah Seberg's name in the CC area of that email. Fitness Protection's June programs, by the way, as a result of that email, will be miles better, all because Sarah Seberg was in the room. All I have to do is copy her name. The very sight of her name on an email brings out everyone's A-game. That thing you do that annoys other people, Sarah Seberg, that shit's fire. And I'm so incredibly grateful for your fire. Your fire cleanses and purifies. Your fire makes everything it touches better. I hope you stand near me forever. I mean that. And every day, I want the work that I produce to be worthy of your attention because I know that I have it and I will not take that gift. Yes, it's a gift for granted. Sarah Seberg is fire. I am opinionated, which means I am fire. And I bet you're fire too. Next time someone tries to tell you that you're annoying because your superpower is just so annoying, that long cape does kind of swish and it's easy to trip over, <clears throat> or because you said something they just didn't want to hear, 
look them in the eye and say, Tweet, tweet, motherfucker. I'm here to make you better with my fire, and I do not care if I annoy you. You are coached, you are loved, and you are winning at life. And you are definitely winning at life if you subscribe to my Nuzzle Nut newsletter, follow me on Facebook, or follow me on Instagram. Feel free to do all three. Kristen and Chill is a comedy podcast that gets real about depression, therapy, and daily struggles. Often irreverent and lighthearted, conversations range from minor social anxiety to mental health and everything that happens in between. Kristen and Chill also covers topics such as having friends with depression, weight gain, suicide prevention, adult bullying, and more. So if you're looking for a more lighthearted take on these things, go check out the show. Search Spotify and wherever else you listen to podcasts to hear more than 80 endearing episodes of Kristen and Chill. You can also join the conversation and find Kristen on Twitter at Kristen Carney. If you're enjoying our podcasts, especially the ones that Coach Sarah does, you can check out the transcripts over at www.coachedandloved.com. All of our existing transcripts are on the blog in the category podcast transcripts. Crazy! I know, they're totally hidden. Head on over to www.coachedandlove.com. We got all kinds of things to say, and that is where we say them.